Hello, all your sense. Welcome to the Quantum Guru. If I ask you to tell me electric field due to a uniformly charged ring, uh, you will immediately tell me the electric field at a point on its axis. But if I ask you, tell me its electric field at a point on its plane inside the ring and the near center of the ring. So you might have to think over that. And that's for the topic of this video. And this result has an application in a question asked in IPHO 2021 in which a question related to electrostatic lens was asked. So this video is a precursor to that thing. So here I'm going to derive expression for electric field due to a uniformly charged ring in its plane within the ring and near center. So let's go ahead and this is a ring ring charge q radius r was the center z the axis x is the plane the two orientation that i've shown here and the point is p on its axis uh, sorry within the plane and the, for the sake of simplicity i've just shown that point on a on x axis but that point could be anywhere within the plane and uh, this distance of that point from the center is uh, small r and i am going to derive that result when the r is very very small compared to the radius of the ring i mean the it is very close to the ring so i'll derive using the gauss law and before uh, using gauss law we need to have the direction of the electric field in space the gaussian surface so what is the direction of electric field the magnitude will come from the uh, Gauss law, but Gauss law needs to, to know the direction of electric field. So what is direction of electric field at P? So symmetry tells me that all the points which are at the same distance from O, either there should not be an electric field. And if there is electric field, so all those points at the same distance from O should have the same electric field. That's what the symmetry means. It cannot uh, make partiality with any other point and so all these points have same electric field and then once again the direction of the symmetry of the directions also tells that the all at all these points the electric field must be radially now radially inward or radially outward that's i'm going to investigate and with that investigation it will come also that it has to be radially so suppose what i'm going to do i just i want to draw a line uh, perpendicular to OP from P like this. So this line is dividing this whole ring into two reasons, one to the left, one to the right. So this is reason one and this is reason two. I want to take few points on the periphery of on this ring. So suppose I have taken this point and this point. These two points I have taken such that these two points are perpendicular to OP. So join this point to P and extend this and you will get one point here and similarly join this point to the P and extend and you will get this point. So basically I've got uh, four points, two on the reason one and two on the reason two. So because of this point here, electric field will be here, assuming Q to be positive. And because of this point, electric field will be here and their resultant will be here. And similarly, because of these two points, electric field will be here. And these two points are nearer to P compared to these two points. So net electric field at uh, this point P would be towards O. Like uh, this is the electric field because of reason 2. And this is the electric field because of the these two points of reason 1. And these two points are nearer to P. So E2 is more in magnitude compared to E1. So the net electric field will be towards O. And similarly, you can take all such a pair, pair points and uh, so all the points of the ring will be covered. So the net electric field in this manner is going to be towards O, radially inward. And obviously, it is um, uh, reasonable also because this reason is nearer to P compared to this reason. So because of this reason, electric field has to be uh, towards O. So net electric field has to be towards O. E net. And here now, this is O and this is the locus of all points at the same distance from same distance from O on this circle. And if the Q is positive, so at all these points, electric field are going to be the radially invert toward the center. If the ring would be negative, the electric field at all those points would be the radially again. 
and this is some unusual result actually it is not unusual result because the charge is here so electric field is actually away from the charge because of all these charge electric field is here 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 and all these electric field is toward the center so there is now enough uh, ground for me to use the gauss law so let me go to the next page to apply the gauss law so once again i've got that same ring uh, this time a big enlarged ring x y is the plane of the ring z is the axis q is the charge of the ring and r is the radius and what i want to do i want to just insert a little pill box like this there is a pill box this pill box has a radius r the pill box is a cylinder whose axis is the same as the axis of this ring the height of the pill box is 2z z above on one side and z below on the other side and um, this pill box is a very very small so z is very small compared to the radius r and r is also very small compared to the radius r oh, i want to uh, understand what is the electric field here so but i've shown here at this point because this point is the a uh, point on the axis so at this point the electric field is e2 and uh, this this is a section of that uh, pill box on the plane and on all these points the electric field is uh, magnitude even and that is radially invert if i take a uh, whole of the ring like this and i want to draw the electric field line assuming this charge to be positive and electric field on the axis is like this here and like this here field lines animates from positive charge and then go away from it so from here some field line that will animate it will go something like this and from here some field line that will animate electric field line will go from this and then like this like this and the same on the below side also like this like this like this and like this now if i take this kind of pill box here if i show it here like this here so at this point electric field is e2 and here this is a this is very small so all this point electric field is almost parallel to axis and practically i can i can assume that all this point electric field is the same and this height is very small and here the electric field is like this like this like this like this so for all practical purposes i can assume electric field at all this point to be the same and that is the beauty of the little approximation and we have to do all this thing for these two appro approximation that i've said small r is very small compared to capital r and z is very very small compared to r and now this e2 what is e2 e2 is the electric field at this point on the axis at a distance z from the center the formula for e2 is a uh, k q z divided by r square plus z square power 3 by 2 k is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught z is very very small compared to capital r so you can uh, neglect the z square compared to r square so that will be further simplified to approximated to capital k q z divided by r cube and now it's all set for to apply the gauss law on this quotient surface that will box s so gauss law tells integration of the e dot ds on the whole gaussian surface that means the total flux through the gaussian surface is equal to a charge in flows divided by epsilon so for this flux the flux through this surface this flat surface is e2 uh, we assume that e2 is same almost same at all these points and the area vector is parallel to e2 so flux is e2 into that area that is a pi r square and the same flux will be here here also area vector will be parallel to e2 so on these two surface together the flux would be e2 into pi r square on one side and on this side same so together that will be twice of e2 into pi r square and here on the curved surface the area vector is obviously taken for the closed surface outward normal so area vector is uh, opposite to the electric field vector so on the curved surface flux will be minus even into 2 pi r into the height that is 2 z so flux here is there this and all the charge in space is at the ring there is no charge within the spill box in the quotient surface u enclosed is zero so rhs is zero 
and now you just cancel this pi from here one r will get cancelled and a factor of two will get cancelled so simplifying this e2 will get uh, even even that's what even we have to find even we are going to get uh, e2 into r divided by 2z and put the value of this e2 here so simplify that and you will get uh, kqr divided by 2 capital rq and uh, put the value of k k is a 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught so we will get e1 is equal to 1 over 8 pi epsilon naught q small r by rq so finally let me summarize the result so here is that uh, charge ring radius capital r uniformly charge q and all the points which inside the plane within the ring which are at a small distance r at a distance r much much smaller than the radius the electric field is given by this expression 1 over 8 pi epsilon naught q into small r by r q if the ring is uh, positively charged this electric field is toward the center if the ring is negatively charged this electric field is uh, away from the center and this very simple result immediately strikes me one thing because this E is directly proportional to small r and toward the center. So if I place a positive charge here and displace it slightly within the plane, radially outward, so immediately a restoring force will bring back to the center and it will start oscillating simple harmonically. This is a set case to make a particle oscillate simple harmonically for a small displacement and that is one thing and another application that i talk about the uh, electrostatic lens ask an ipho and i'll take that video sometime later till then enjoy physics thank you for watching this video